All right, so boot drives, because like I said, I want all of these to just be data drives that I don't have to worry about being boot drives. I can just pull out any one of them and the system will continue to work. So what is that going to be? Well, I had not really thought about that too much before I got to this point. I, oh, cool. Um, okay. <laughs> I, 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 I had some drives free, so here's the thing. I initially, I just had, not that one. Um, I knew I'd be able to use this drive. This is a 250 gig uh, Samsung uh, Evo something or another. And that was going to be the drive I knew I had. So, oh man, this thing sucks. I was trying to figure out how I was gonna use this. So 250s, you know, that's enough for the server and whatever server services I'm going to run on it, but this is going to be a big data server. That's its whole thing. So I knew I needed scratch space on here and I needed just somewhere high speed to work with data because it's, you know, spinning drives in mass are going to be pretty fast, but I don't have mass right now. I'm just going to have the two one terabyte drives to start out with. Eventually I'll build this up and it will have space, but that's a long ways off, um, especially with the NAS that I was sent before. Um, that really changed my plans for how this is going to be built up and how on what time scale because that really alleviated the uh, video storage needs I have. So this project is kind of changing scope a little bit. But anyway, um, I do want it to eventually be uh, data storage. I think that this has the potential to be my forever data server. Um, I just need to get it to that point. It's not like I'll have unlimited storage space in here, but I can have like two banks of uh, drives, fill one bank, start moving on to the next, pop out that whole bank and then replace it and then start filling that up. You know, it'll be easier to manage the drives in this. So, uh, but all right. So what am I gonna do? 250s, not enough. Well, in my desktop that I've always used for editing, I've had a four-way RAID 0 setup. Now, this is not a good idea. It was a very dumb idea, but it was a very fun idea, most importantly. Um, I knew I wanted two terabytes of storage on SSD in my desktop because I didn't want to have to deal with the storage limits. So it was like 2015, I, uh, I, I spent too much on SSDs and I just got it done, did it exactly how I wanted. So I did that, um, set it up as RAID 0. Actually, I never had problems with it. Just, it was fine, it was solid. Um, I'd use the Intel RAID controller, rock solid, great. Um, so when I got the ZH, uh, HP Z820 sent to me, um, it also had an Intel RAID controller and I just migrated the drives over, the Intel RAID controller picked up the RAID, said, oh, there you go, and booted just fine, no problems. Um, I did eventually have to reinstall and do a bunch of stuff because uh, video drivers and blah, blah, blah. Um, but the RAID was always fine. Well, recently the Z820 was temperamental and it decided to destroy the RAID 0 array after three, four years of it running perfectly with no problems. The RAID controller eventually is the one that toasted it. So I have four um, 500 gig drives and I did not put them back into a RAID 0. I knew I just wanted to be done with that. That was a bad idea. So. I just installed Ubuntu on one of the 500 gig drives and left the second 500 gig drive in there to install Windows on eventually because I'll want it for games. So I have two other 500 gig drives. Now, the Xserve is currently on a one terabyte drive. And once this is operational, the Xserve is not going to be a primary load server and will be decommissioned to um, fun project server status. So I can just do stuff with that. I have a really cool idea. I wanna use the Xserve. I actually have three functional Xserves now. Um, I wanna use those four. They're not mad computational powerhouses, but three of them are gonna give this thing a run for its money. So, you know, it'd be fun to see what you could do with three of them at once. So yeah, I'll be checking that out. But anyway, so that'll put a one terabyte drive into the mix once that's decommissioned. So here is my end plan. I am going to put the one terabyte drive from the Xserve into my Z820 desktop. I will pull the two 500 gig drives out of there, combine them with this into this uh, four, two and a half inch to five and a quarter inch drive mount bay. 
Um, and then that will be my scratch array. I'm going to change that from raid zero to a ZFS pool in ZFS uh, one, whatever the name is for that. I know uh, Linux implementations of ZFS aren't the best and I am gonna go with Ubuntu server on here, but I'll just uh, figure it out as I go along because I want Ubuntu server because I'm happy with that. And I want a ZFS pool because I wanna play with that more. The uh, last drive, I'm just gonna have be kind of a floater drive, maybe in here somewhere. I haven't really decided how this is gonna be mounted. Um, one of the things about this case is because they have four drives and then the two two and a halfs, there's a ton of wasted space in here compared to regular servers. Um, so I could just mount all kinds of stuff in this spot. And then back in here, there's loads of empty space. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with all that yet, but I don't plan on leaving it empty. So I'm gonna have some goodies, maybe like a Raspberry Pi back in here that's an emergency SSH interface. Or maybe it'll be an SSH gateway to everything. Um, that way if the server is off, there's always some way of connecting to something. But anyway, um, I'm just gonna chuck this in here right now, I don't know. But uh, okay, so decommission the um, Xserve, one terabyte, put it in my desktop, move all four 500 gigs into here, ZFS pool, I'll have about 1.4 terabytes of storage on that, it'll be redundant, it'll be fast, it'll be great. Um, that for now though, I'm just gonna do a RAID 0 pool of these, um, just real RAID 0, I'm not gonna bother. Actually, I might do a Linux software RAID because I've never tried that before and that'll be easier to set up. But anyway, I'm gonna set that up here. Um, the uh, SSD space, there's still plenty of space with where the uh, drive will mount. So I can have my 3D printed thing in here for that still. So, uh, yeah, that's the plan. Install on this, later reconfigure these in RAID 0 and then even later have all of the drives in there in a four-way ZFS1 pool. So for now, let's go ahead and get this connected and start installing Ubuntu on that. I am limited to the single Molex uh, power connector here. So I'm going to use one uh, SATA splitter because I'm gonna be installing three drives, but I'm also gonna have to get another Molex splitter and <laughs> have a second SATA splitter on there. This is so stupid. Oh man, my next purchase for this should really be a, uh, a better power supply, but I know it's gonna be uh, something different. So we'll, uh, I don't know, there's so much money I gotta put into this. I gotta really plan out what I buy when. Anyway, let's uh, let's move on. I'm gonna go see. I think I have another Molex splitter in a uh, different computer I'm working on. Let me go see if I can find that. All right, I need three SATA ports here, but I didn't find another Molex connector, but I did find something else. So we're gonna go with a Molex splitter to M Molex to SATA. Oh, these suck. to SATA to Molex, back to Molex to SATA. There we go. So we got three SATA power connectors and 100% chance of burning my house down. Oh, uh, hmm, that's not a good thing. <laughs> How about this? I use one Molex to SATA and I just put the two SATA drives in here, the two 500s just for now um and then when i buy a better power supply i'll just have it direct connected because <laughs> yeah this is uh oh man that's a bad idea yeah i shouldn't do that so i'll i'll just go with this there's already power going to the bottom for these two drives over here so yeah that's fine for a temporary solution and uh another thought occurred to me i should not use a single drive as my boot drive for the server. So when I go ahead and swap these to a uh, four-way ZFS pool, I'll go ahead and migrate this to, um, I'll get a second one of these and then raid one, two of these so that it's a lot more uh, reliable. So yeah, that's the plan. Uh, let's just go ahead and get this all set up now.
Okay, let's go over everything that's been done so far, because I think we're at the final hardware configuration. Okay, so we have the Supermicro X9 DRD-IF. I didn't even have to look at it. I've looked it up too much. I know the model number now. Um, with two E5-2690 CPUs, 96 gigabytes of DDR3. Um, we have to have this Radeon that I bought at Goodwill um, in here because there's some kind of weird hardware problem. There is an Adaptex SCSI card, which I should really put a screw in uh, to keep in place. I'll do that before continuing. Um, we have the 16 bay server chassis with two five and a quarter inch bays. One has a HP uh, Ultrium 4 LTO drive um, connected to the Adaptex SCSI card. We have a four bay um, two and a half inch drive holder that has a single 250 gig uh, Samsung SSD for the boot device currently. Um, those two more down here that'll be put into RAID 0, 10 terabytes of storage that will for the moment be left mostly untouched. I will be RAID 1-ing them eventually. And everything's cable managed and connected. It has not been powered up yet in this final configuration, but it should be fine. So, I think we're ready to go and actually install the operating system rather than just live boot it off of a flash drive. So, we're uh, super duper close. Oh, and one final thing. There is still space up front for me to 3D print my ad adapter bracket thing for me to create a dock for my uh, camera SSDs. I will need to get a USB 3.1 card to uh, stick in here because this doesn't have any USB 3.0. So, I'm going to have to do that. Then I can run a USB-C cable through here. Um, it might be... Yeah, it'll be a C to C. I was looking at different adapters out there um, for uh, well, host controllers for USB 3.1 with Gen 2. It's uh, There's not a lot. Um, there are some really cheap ones. There's one that's like 25 bucks, I think. None of them um, <laughs> have a port on the inside. Shocking. Um, so what I'm probably going to do is get one, get the bracket, and then drill a big hole in the bracket, um, maybe a couple holes, and then buzz out the space between it so I can plug the cable in externally and then reroute it back internally, um, and then still have the card securely mounted. I'll probably want to debar that so I don't abrade the cable over time. But yeah. It's a lot to do with this server still. I got big plans for it. It's just going to take some time and poo money to get it going. So, uh... Yep, let's go ahead and start the install process. I have uh, 18 minutes on this memory card left, and this one's full, memory card SSD. And it would take like three hours to copy it all off because it's a terabyte. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and not record the Ubuntu install. I think you've seen that before, maybe. I don't know if you want. You can install it on a VM on practically any computer. So just gonna go ahead and skip that before I begin the install here though there is one more thing I wanted to mention it's a shame that the um, IPMI uh, KVM interface stopped working because there's a way of mounting ISOs using IPMI and you can do a remote system install completely over a web browser on this thing it, that's a really cool feature but Without the KVM working, you know, it's kind of not as impressive to just mount the ISO and then use it like it's right here anyway. And I got the flash drive ready to go, so I might as well do that. But there is the capability of doing that, so, you know, it's a shame that it, the remote interface isn't working fully. So this is my first time using the new Fancy Pants installer. I really like it. It's a lot like, I think it's Plymouth, the uh, standard Ubuntu installer, but in text form. I wish that you could use this for the uh, desktop install as well. Anyway, um, why on earth is PowerShell in here as an option? <laughs> like, half of what makes Linux great is Bash or ZSH or any of the other Unix-like terminals are just awesome, and they've been great for, like, 40 or 50 years now. <laughs> PowerShell. Oh, that, that gave me a good laugh. I like this. This is it's this is good. Um, the This menu, I, I, like I said, I've never encountered this before. Um, I would like to see Let's Encrypt in here, though. That would be really useful. Um... Yeah, it just, it kind of makes sense, uh, to have that in there. I probably just don't have a snap package. This is, I'm not a fan of the fact these are going to be snap packages, but whatever. 
That's the way the world works now for this, I guess. This is a real reason that I could see myself switching to CentOS or uh, something else. Not CentOS. Um, or is CentOS? Yeah, CentOS is their server. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the snaps. Uh, looks like it's uh, done now. All right. Reboot now or reboot now. <laughs> I don't know why there's two options, but whatever. Uh, let's reboot. What do you bet that IPMI is uh, still being a problem? I bet it is. Oh, yeah, it's going to tell me. Uh, I should boot now. Uh, yeah, probably IPMI being a problem. Let's see if it's up on my phone yet. Uh, 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 uh. Refresh. No, nope, nothing. So, yeah, it's not going to be happy. All right, there we go. We're all booted. The uh, 250 gig drive's working. I haven't plugged the 500 gig drives in yet. Let's uh, see how well that'll work on hot swap. Um, well, that's interesting. Let's see if it can detect them. Well, 465 and 465. Perfect. All righty. Uh, and it should have uh, problems with them because they're... Um, they're not formatted. They're a broken RAID 0 array still. So, yeah, that makes sense. Um, let's try... Do, do, I don't really know how you do the uh, Linux uh, software RAID. Let me look that up. Let me, just, let me just dive straight into the software RAID. See how that goes. All right. I don't know if they could make this much easier. Um, let's go ahead and try this out. So these are B and C drives. I don't know if they'll stay that way after a boot. Probably because that's... Uh, uh, the boot drives on uh, bay zero and the these are on two and three so um, Let's see here. So it's uh, man, uh, Well, I'm pretty sure this will be installed um, And I don't okay, it is installed all right, so we're gonna do create now that I skip past me mumbling while failing to be able to type, um, that is the command. It looks like I need to run. Bam. Array started. All right, that's easy enough. Um, this is fdisk list. Boom. MD 931 gigs. Man, that is like stupid easy. Do I have to run that every time? Or is that just like done now? Save the array. Okay, yeah. Let's make sure the array is resembled automatically at boot. We have to... Uh, they're making it seem real, real easy, like, that's no fair. Well, I'll do that later. I'm not going to reboot for this. Um, oh, I was realizing how long it's going to take to get some files on here to play with. But anyway, um, yeah, I really want to avoid a reboot because it takes forever to get past the IPMI thing. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and just uh, make that a file system. Fdisk dev md0. All right, I'm gonna make a new DOS, make a new primary. Um, boom, done, okay, cool. Um, all right, let's say I'm gonna do CD, um, oh my God, yeah. slash MNT, okay, wow. Uh, da -da -da -da, scratch, <laughs> just call it what it is. All right, and we will mount dev mdp zero one two scratch boom. Ow. Uh, looks good. All right, all right. It's time to finally put the new server up here to the test against the X serve. This should be um kind of an obliteration. Now, to give you some um, perspective on what exactly I'm doing here, I've copied a 600 megabyte video clip from the beginning of this very video. It's actually one of the video clips that's on this drive right now. And um, I'm going to convert it from the ProRes files that my camera records in to H.265, which is how I'm long-term storing all of my recorded video clips. So, I am going to encode the same file in the same way, using the same settings on both computers at once and time it so we can see how quick this is. So let's compare. Start the XServe and start this server. 
Uh, the X-Serve, AAC, oh, are you kidding me? That doesn't really matter, we can just... How? I've been... Oh, I actually haven't converted the files on the X-Serve, I've been doing it on the, uh, new server. Well, here you can see the, um, uh, <laughs> the command here, I'm pretty sure that's what I need. All right, here, uh, add dash strict to, oh, dash to, man, stupid, FFmpeg, oops, alrighty, well, I'll rerun it, it's being timed, so when this is over, you'll just be able to see, um, how long it took each one, but yeah, we can see here, um, this server is going at 9 frames per second, and this one is going at a 4.5, so the new server is literally twice as fast as the X-Serve. Which is why I think it'll be fun to pair up, um, the three X-Serves I have, because the, only the one that I'm currently using is a dual CPU model. The other two are single CPU, but I think they all have the exact same chips, so the two <laughs> other ones are equivalent to the one. So I can kind of double the CPU power by chucking more servers at it. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to let this run and then um, let you guys come back and see the results for how long they took. Although you can kind of start to imagine that's a uh, drop down to 3.6. That's that's not good. Uh, ugh, yeah. But, uh, yep, so we'll be able to see how well this works. All right, there we have it. The new server finished the encoding in 6 minutes and 45 seconds whereas the xserve took 18 minutes and 16 seconds so the new server is three times faster not twice as fast like i thought oh that's that's gonna be so awesome so uh yeah that's uh that's it for the performance part of it there is uh one more thing we need to check out though the tape drive. Oh, wow. Okay, so the case uh, does not open up quite enough to get it to fit in there right. Hmm, okay. Let me try this again. Ah, uh, that'll work. I think. Ah, uh, okay. There we go. It ejected. Ah, eh, now it took it. Well, as long as it can eject it, that's all that matters. Okay, so this is the directory with the re-encoded file. It went from like 600 some megabytes down to 273. Usually I get a lot better compression than that. Shorter files, it's not gonna be as good. Um, like I took uh, 800 gigs of the uh, HP12C video and got it down to I think eight. That was crazy. But anyway, um, so we're gonna write this file to the tape drive. So if we check what's on the tape drive right now, we will see there is nothing. So we're going to go ahead and write the file to there. So we're gonna go ahead and grab, um, uh, why is it doing that? Uh, tar B, yeah, it should be, what's it called? A zero, pseudo tar. Dash B, 512. I'll go, I'm probably gonna do another video on the tape drives in the future, so if you don't understand what's going on here, that's fine. Uh, T, V, no, C, V, F, Dev, S, T, zero. All right. Uh, yeah. No, ah, there we go, all righty. Writing to the tape drive. And it's spinning, I can hear it. You probably can't, I can move the microphone. No idea if that's coming across, but it looks like it is finished writing so let's go ahead and list the contents of the tape drive again and bam there we go so we can write to the tape drive on here now let's go ahead and uh eject the tape as well Ugh, i ended up having to reboot i mean stupid i don't know the tape drive kind of just locked up i don't know when i did the uh, file directory listing but whatever 
Uh, it might have been just it, trying to read through the whole tape. I don't know. Tape's kind of strange like that. Uh, but, uh, since we're done now, let's go ahead and try to eject the tape. So I'm going to do this. I do know that you don't need to use sudo. You can add yourself to the tape group and then this, uh, you don't need to use sudo. Like if I do ls-l, um, dev, and grep, st0, I'll see tape, so if I just add myself to the tape group, I don't need to do that. But, just for now, because I'm, I just set the server up, I don't have that. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and try and eject. Uh, mt, yep, eject. Oh, yeah. Alright, here we go. It's respooling it. And I'm only afraid about the door being able to lift up all the way, uh, mechanically. So, we'll see. Any moment. Oh, it's getting ready. Ah, it's, eh, it's kind of tight. <laughs> that, that's not super desirable, but hey, it worked. Yeah, all right, yeah, I'd love to get rid of this stupid frame. I can just, like... There's two screws on the sides, and then it's, like, bent steel around the front. I could try and cut alongside the bottom there. That would totally disconnect that, but that really doesn't sound fun. And, like I said, I cannot turn this around. Um, this might have been designed for, uh, like, SCSI CD drives, but no. No, 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 that doesn't make sense either, because, yeah, that's how that would have mounted. They... Clearly, we're trying to block that, too, I guess. I don't know. I don't know why there's a lip here. This is so stupid. I don't get it. But anyway, there's tape drive working, and, uh, yeah. I think it's time to wrap this up. Well, that's it. The server is now in its minimal configuration and ready to go. So, I am quite happy with how this has turned out. Um... Yeah, except for this. I'm not thrilled about that. But everything else is good. Well, in the video, but that, that's kind of... I knew that was going to happen. So, everything else, though, is is pretty good. Well, maybe not the power supply. That kind of needs a place so I can do the... Y you know, it, it's a work in progress. So, there's definitely going to be more coming up. Um, I'm going to be... Once everything that the X serve is currently doing has been transitioned over to this, the one terabyte drive becomes available... I'll migrate that to my desktop, move the drives from my desktop to here for the scratch disk rate, which I'm now thinking I'm actually, it's not going to be just uh, scratch, it's going to be um, where all of my video project files are that are on this server. Um, everything else will be uh, on the other, the ZFS server for right now, the, uh, the NAS that I was sent. So, yeah, uh, got a lot of plans here. So one of the next steps um, for this is getting the... 10 gig cards that I was sent uh, running. So these are dual port 10 gigabit networking cards and these are going to be required to do editing over the network off of the scratch disk. So yeah, I have to get these set up. There, It's not as simple as just plugging them in because all the fans are bad on the ones. That's why I was sent them. Uh, so I have to get a new um, fan and the only way to do that is just replace the heat sink entirely. So yeah, I got to do that. They're not inexpensive. I gotta do a bunch of those. Um, get that done. Uh, let's see. Stuff that'll happen off video. I'll migrate all the XServe services and then uh, get that little drive array sorted out. Eventually, I will be pulling in the uh, new drives. That'll probably... Will that be on camera? I don't know. I'll think about it because it's probably going to be pretty quick and boring. Not too much of interest there. So, yeah. This is not going to be a fun video to edit. Uh, I can tell you that right now, and as simple as that is, it's so easy to tell you that because these two drives, yeah, those are full. This is a one terabyte drive. This is a 500 gig drive. Um, I recorded apparently a lot of footage. This is the most footage I've ever recorded on this camera. Those both can store a minute of footage now. I'm actually down to recording onto an emergency SSD. The video is recording live to this drive as I hold it up. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's cool. Um, now I know if I'm ever doing a really long video like this where it's, it's maybe the visual quality doesn't matter all that much, I'm going to set it to a lower quality level because it really changes a lot. I can only fit, um, 
an hour and 12 minutes on this one terabyte SSD when I'm recording with this camera. It is nuts. So yeah, I get to have this chew through 1500 gigs of footage now and convert that to uh, H.265. So that's going to be fun. Um, you saw how long 600 megs takes. It's, it's a fast computer, but this still isn't a fast process. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Got the motherboard squared away. This is, it's looking good. I'm going to go pop this in the server rack. It's, it's not really filmable in there right now. You wouldn't want to see it anyway. It's just going to be me struggling to lift and fit this in there because it's all heavy now because it's got all the stuff in it and just trying to align the rails. Yada, yada. It's not the best thing. And then I got to reach underneath, wire it up, blah boring so yeah in the future we'll be throwing in the 10 gig card um getting that network set up i have a cat 5e run between uh the desktop and the server so i might replace that with a cat 6 before i do that video uh but yeah i know cat 7 is a 10 gig cable i just have spools of cat 6 so it's free for me to do that but yeah anyway um that's pretty much it new power supply is gonna be uh i don't know it's, I'm, I'm really torn. There's like a whole bunch of things I need for this project. I need the Type-C um, PCIe card for the drives. I need the power supply for those drives, uh, these drives. I need the uh, fans for the 10 gig network cable. So it's there's just like a whole bunch of stuff that I need. Oh, eventually I need a GPU to render on here. That's like super low priority. I can do that on the desktop for now. That's not that big of a deal. And we're going to be really happy to be able to offload the video conversion though to here because that takes so much longer than rendering. And when the videos are being converted, I can't fit the... I, well, when the videos are being converted, I can't record these videos because the desktop makes too much noise. So having this be out of here is going to make that so much easier now. Um, but yeah, that's it. Oh yeah. And we proved the tape drive worked. So <laughs> all sorts of fun this time around, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's, uh, all I'm going to be doing today for the server. There's other server stuff that I've done in the past that I'll link to in the description. And if you want to support the channel, I am on Patreon. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this look at the new server I'm getting set up and I'll see you next time.